My name is Enea. I'm a survivor. If anybody will ever read this, please know that I had a daughter, Julia, whom I loved more than my own life. I don't know what day it is anymore. It's been a long time since I last checked. I've tried to figure it out. I think the switch off was about three months ago now. This is the last date that I remember for sure. February 28th. I was home with my daughter Julia. We still had some life drop bottles left and we were listening to Atlantis radio to find out what was going on. When we heard Sebastian's message, I put an arm around Julia's little shoulders and I told her to go get her backpack and put her things in it. I did the same, a thousand thoughts spinning in my mind, but I couldn't grasp any of them. What should I bring with me? How would we get there? I tried not to lose control, but it wasn't easy. I took my hiking backpack, my shoes, all the water we had, and anything I thought could come in handy. The rest, we were gonna have to find it along the road. As we closed the door behind us, I knew I was never gonna see that house again. Things happened very quickly. In a single day, we went back centuries. No electricity, no communications, no more life drop water from the government. Mass hysteria did the rest. Resources vanished in a second because no one was producing or extracting them. All factories were completely abandoned. Governments crumbled, one by one, like giants with feet of clay. If their fall made any noise, no one noticed. Many people left the cities searching for an isolated shelter, which, by the way, couldn't save their lives. Pretty soon, cities became ghostly places. Many things happened since that day. Julia is not with me anymore. And I had a lot of time to think. The road is long and I don't know if I'll ever get there. However, to survive, I've given myself rules. This way it's easier to remember the things I must do and the things I must not do. And trust me, these are lessons I've learned on my skin. One. Only drink life drop water. All the other brands were recalled from the market in February and supplies were destroyed to avoid the spread of diseases. It's the hardest thing. My only thought every single day. Water, water, water. And if you find some, you can't sleep at night because you get paranoid and you're afraid that maybe you didn't close the bottle tightly enough. If you spend more than two days without drinking, you start to lose your concentration, which is the only thing that can keep you alive. Many have died because they couldn't resist the temptation to drink unsafe water. Rather than dying of thirst, some people chose to die of contamination. They just couldn't stand the thirst. Never drink rain water, water from rivers, lakes, spring water. The survival of mankind depends on the stock of life drop water that's left on the planet. Supplies are running out fast though, and no one can restore them. There's no working factory on the whole earth right now. It's like a countdown is on. Staying under the rain is not dangerous, as long as you don't drink about a glass of it. I think it depends on the amount. Hygiene is a different story. You need to wash yourself from time to time to avoid getting some infection, but never use unsafe water. You get sick, maybe because of contact with mucosa. Two, be aware of where you put your feet. What remains of the world is quickly turned into ruins without the human hand. Subways are flooded. Electricity pylons are falling down. If a fire bursts out, It'll keep blazing until the rain comes or until there's nothing left to burn. The most critical resources have vanished so quickly that many people didn't even have time to notice. No petrol, gasoline or any other fuel. No medicines, no weapons, no munition. 
If there's still something left, it must be hidden God knows where. 3. Eat anything that is not rotting. Fruits and vegetables don't spread the infection, even if grown with contaminated water or rainwater. It looks like somehow they cancel the effect. Same goes with meat, eggs and animal products. You can eat them without risks. Animals are immune to diseases transmitted by water. Well, they, at least, have been spared. 4. Avoid the corpses. I don't know what percentage of the world population has survived. No one is gathering statistics right now. What I know is that you can walk for weeks without meeting a soul. So, I guess there's almost no one left. Corpses are everywhere, and it's better to avoid them for the stench and the diseases, and also because day after day after day, your mind won't be able to stand the sight of all those dead people. If you ever meet someone along their way, keep in mind, they have lost everyone they ever knew, just like you and me. Concepts like family, brother, sister, father, have become so remote that they sound unreal. Each one of us carries their own crosses. We are walking graveyards. 5. Avoid cities. There is no city anymore, no village either. Loneliness has become the natural condition. No one wants to take responsibility of anyone else. Facing extinction, almost everybody has forgotten what selflessness means. And just a few managed to remain human. They are the only real treasure you can find right now. Cities have become unsafe places. Vegetation is beginning to grow on the asphalt. Gangs of ruthless men assault those who are full enough to walk the streets. 6. Give yourself a goal. Having one is essential. I am going to an appointment. To honor a deal and to search for other survivors. I've been walking for months now. It's my willpower that allows me to make one step after the other. My name is Enea. I'm a survivor. If anybody will ever read this, please know that I had a daughter, Julia, whom I loved more than my own life, and that I haven't given up yet. Free. Water. Yeah.